All right. Captain Greybeard. <laughs> so today's teaching is about pirates. Now I'm sure many of you have heard of the movie The Pirates of the Caribbean. Personally, I'm not a fan of Johnny Depp. Uh, he said some very derogatory things about Americans. Uh, he's your typical Holly Weird actor. But the movie has brought about a lot of attention in the West lately. His movies. The movie portrays pirates in the usual way with their tricorn hats. That's, there's different kinds of tricorn hats. There's the buccaneer hat. There's the swashbuckler hat. And they're poet shirts. If you ever wonder what those fluffy shirts are, they're called poet shirts. This is the Bellamy shirt. This is the merchant shirt. You can see a lot of different kinds of dress here. Making up their own Motley Crue style of color in coordination. In fact, that's where the word Motley Crue came from. Most pirates were poor, and the clothes they wore were usually stolen. So they rarely fit, I don't know if I want to say stolen, but they're attributed, uh, what's the word? Acquired, acquired, confiscated. So they rarely fit well and the colors rarely match because one ship would have, you know, shirts, they'd be carrying shirts, another ship would be carrying pants. And you're not going to get the right fit, you know, they just got a bunch of <clears throat> different kinds of, of clothing there. So they just, usually they're either too small or they were too big. And yes, there were a few wealthier pirates, but they weren't common. So why are we talking about pirates today? What's all the hubbub? Well, what if I were to tell you that this guy was actually this guy? <laughs> Not all pirates were Jews, but most of them were. Most of them were. One famous pirate, actually more than one, but there was a, a couple that were ordained rabbis. We'll talk more about one of them later. But unlike what the movies seem to suggest, pirating goes back much further with the Jewish people than the 1500s, medieval times. In fact, Jewish piracy goes back even at least to Hasmonean times. Ancient Jewish life was concentrated in the highlands of the Sumerian and Judean mountains, located some distance from the Mediterranean Sea. So therefore, Jews were initially not very active in seafaring or navigation at that time. Things were different if you go back to the time of Solomon. But at, that, at the time of the Hasmoneans, the Hasmoneans... Uh, state acquired ports of their own. Joppa, Ashdod, Gaza. Those were all added to their domain. And a small number of Jewish sailors began to develop. One of these pirates was named Yason, Jason. There is a drawing of a pirate ship following two merchant ships at Jason's tomb in Jerusalem. The drawing shows these three ships, one of which is a warship with Jason holding the bow and getting ready to shoot. The charcoal drawing is dated back at the early first century BC. The tomb of, Jerusalem, of Jason is located uh, in Rahavia, in Jerusalem, it's going to be walking distance from where we will be staying when we're there. We're going to go see it. That's the tomb there. We don't know much about this Yasson, but he was obviously wealthy looking at his tomb. Uh, so we must, he must have done very well for himself. By the end of first century, the first century Jewish-Roman War, also known as the Great Revolt, Jews who had been driven out of Galilee rebuilt Joppa, Jaffa, which had been destroyed earlier by Cestius Gallus. Surrounded and cut off by the Romans, they rebuilt the city walls 
excuse me, and used a light flotilla to demoralize commerce and interrupt the grain supply to Rome from Alexandria. I just put this picture up so you can see that's the actual Hasmonean wall of the city right there. Parts of it is still standing. Josephus, in his Jewish war, wrote, They also built themselves a great many piratical, is that how you say that? Piratical? Piratical? Uh, ships and turned pirates upon the seas near to Syria and Phoenicia and Egypt and made those seas unnavigable to all men. In other words, they controlled the whole Mediterranean. The Romans didn't like that. So in 67, Vespasian attacked Joppa. The people of Joppa took to the sea, but a pre-dawn storm wrecked the ships. Many drowned, others killed themselves. Those who survived the wreck, numbering about 4,200 people, were killed by the Romans. Joppa was destroyed once again. Josephus gives us more details. He said, but some of them thought that to die by their own swords was lighter than by the sea. And so they killed themselves before they were drowned. Although the greatest part of them, he says, were carried by the waves and dashed to pieces against the abrupt parts of the rocks, insomuch that the sea was bloody a long way. And the maritime parts were full of dead bodies. He said, For the Romans came upon those that were carried to the shore and destroyed them. And the number of the bodies that were thus thrown out of the sea was 4,200. After Joppa's destruction for the second time, Vespasian built a citadel there to prevent the Jewish pirates from taking the city over for a third time. The Romans considered their, consider their victory over Joppa's pirates very important, and they commemorated it with a large number of victory coins. So it wasn't enough for them to, to have destroyed all our ships and our people. We had to use coins after that that celebrated it. We don't see a lot of Jewish piracy until we get to the age of exploration. That's in the early 15th century. Now I want to deviate here for a bit and explain how the centuries are calculated. If someone says the 15th century, that means from 1401 to 1500. A lot of people, it's kind of confusing. You say the 15th century, you're thinking 1501 to 16, right? But it's actually 100 years prior to that. A lot of people don't know how to calculate that, so I wanted to show you how, how that works. So we get to what's called the Exploration Age, also called the Age of Discovery. And we're going to go back to the 1400s. This Age of Exploration was mostly enabled by crucial navigational advances that were developed by the Jews. This was done mostly by a group of Jews which collectively were called the Majorcan Cartographic School. This highly gifted and intelligent group of Jews lived on an island called Majorca. This is in the Mediterranean. You can see the red dot there just off the coast of Spain. They started in the 13th century, going on into the 15th and 16th century, this school. What they didn't teach you in school, high school, or college, is that Columbus would not have been able to sail as he did to the Americas without the help of these Jews in Majorca. Jews were already known for their expertise at that time in navigation. You may have heard of the Catalan Atlas. I learned about that in high school, I remember. 
It's one of the most famous maps ever made. It's been described as the most important map of the entire medieval period. The man who made it, who created it, was named Avraham Kreskes. He was a part of the Majorican school in Catalonia. They all worked together. So you have this little piece of Spain on the coast that was included in the Majorcan school with the, with the island of Majorca. Just that little bit, you had the, the Majorcan school, that whole island, and then this little piece of Spain. That's all co called, to the, the, collectively, they were called the Majorcan school. And they all worked together. These men, these people were brilliant. One of the many things that they did was they invented a chart called a Portland nautical chart. I had a good time last night. Uh, Don and uh, Pear came to see to see us last night. They were going to be here for this service, but then they had to go back. They had to leave after the, after our, they met with us. And he was like an admiral in the Navy. He's a retired admiral. And we talked about all this stuff. And he's like, yeah, I know what that is. Yeah, I know what that is. Yep, 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 yep. And he just hit all the points. It was kind of exciting to talk to him about it. So they made this Portland nautical chart, and that was used to deduce exact sailing directions between any two points. You'll see why that is such an important part of this study later. You're all familiar with a compass. Well, this kind of compass has more than just north, south, east, and west. It's also got northwest, southeast, it's got some more points coming out, doesn't it? Well, that's called a compass rose. It's more than just north, south, east, and west. It includes these other directions as well. The compass rose was invented by Jews from the Majorican school. This is one, the one that's on the Catalan Atlas. They call it the rose because they put it in different colors. You see the different colors on here? So what does all this have to do with Jewish pirates? Everything. When Jews were expelled from various countries, the Jews took to the seas in order to flee. Not all of them, but many of them. Some set course for distant countries, like Brazil, but some stayed on the oceans. Many of the ships that transported these displaced Jews were owned by Jews. These ships became feared among countries who persecuted their Jews. Both the English and the Spanish kicked their Jews out, and confiscated everything that we owned. We were left with nothing as we initially got on these ships. Not all the Jews just rolled over. Some decided to fight back. And with their advanced knowledge of navigation, astronomy, and cartography, knowledge of maps, they planned attacks on ships of the countries who persecuted them. Yay! Of course, the Spanish and the English made them into devils. They tried to scare their people so their people would have no sympathy for these homeless Jews. This portrayal lasts even to today. The devil ship pirates. Now, I'm not saying all the pirates were Jews. I'm saying a majority of them were. Most estimate that 100,000 Jews were expelled from Spain alone. That's a lot of Jews. I'm also not saying they were all good, but I am saying that most of them were simply trying to survive. Many of them were good. Many of them were very, very good. Some were even rabbis. Let me introduce to you Samuel Palace. This is a painting of him done by the famous artist Rembrandt. They knew each other. Samuel came from a long, long line 
of rabbis. At least one of his sons also became a rabbi. He's one of the most known pirates that existed in his time. There are some non-Jewish historians who did not deny this because Samuel at one point had converted to Christianity. So they're saying, oh no, he was a Christian. Well, a lot of them did this in secret to save their lives or sometimes even for political or different reasons. But they were still practicing Judaism in secret. Because if they didn't, they'd be killed. They don't understand that a lot of Jews converted outwardly because if they didn't, they'd be murdered. In 1596, Palache, he settled in The Hague. He founded one of the first informal Jewish congregations in that city. And he also served as rabbi of that Jewish community. His ships all served kosher food. And all of his ships also included a synagogue. He later became a well-known diplomat and forged the first Christian-Muslim alliance in history between the Protestants and the Muslims. He died on February 4, 1616 at The Hague. This is his tombstone. You can see it's all written in Hebrew. He was buried in the Jewish cemetery there. If he had been a Christian, they wouldn't have allowed that. It wasn't unusual for many of these Jewish captains to have fully kosher kitchens aboard their ships. Samuel Palache had a large fleet of pirate ships, all with kosher food and a synagogue. One may say, well, I don't like all the skulls and the crossbones and, the, and all this talk, their talk of death. Well, it's important to understand where the skull and the crossbones came from. It later became known as the Jolly Rogers, but it was originally a remembrance for the Jews who had died due to the horrible persecutions that they suffered. You'll see many tombs, Jewish tombs, with their insignia. The skull and crossbones was the symbol that they put on their tombs. As the persecutors became more scared of us, the more we allowed it and used it to our own advantage. It was much easier to board enemy ships while many of their men were paralyzed with fear. And if you don't like seeing the symbols of bones, you won't appreciate the Yad Vashem in Israel and many artistic pieces concerning the Holocaust. They use bones in their, in their pictorials. Or even art that's inspired from the Bible itself, like from the Valley of the Dry Bones, seen by Ezekiel the prophet. The fact is, death is a part of reality. And we as Jews celebrate it. Remember, we do Yeats core for those of our loved ones who have passed. This has always been off-putting to our non-Jewish neighbors. They thought it odd, some even satanic, that we did this, even though it is conclusively biblical. But don't Satanists celebrate death too? They do, but in a very different way. We see death as a passage to life. They just revel in death and pain for its own sake. But the Christians of the medieval period still thought it was very strange and dangerous that the Jews celebrated Yitzchor. So they made up lies about us. Well, that's never happened. They thought we spoke to the dead because we did Yitzchor. So the enemies of the Jews made up stories about us talking with ghosts. These stories have persisted to recent times although the Jewish connection has been lost. But just because they've forgotten about it doesn't mean that we have. So they thought we talked to ghosts and that some of us even came back as ghosts on the high seas to seek revenge. 
Revenge. Revenge for what? Hmm. They wouldn't talk about that. But in their hearts, they knew what they had done to us. And that fear gripped their very land-loving souls. So we were kicked out of Spain and other countries. And since many of the ships were owned by Jews, we were loaded up. Not unlike how we were loaded on trains in the Holocaust. Many of the Jews of Spain migrated to Brazil and other places in South America, some to Arab countries. How did they get there? Well, now we have, how, how did they find the, the new world in all these places? Now we have to remember about that brilliant group of Jews from that small island off the coast of Spain. Early on, before the Jews had been expelled, these Jewish cartographers had made maps and charts far ahead of their time. These are the same maps and charts that Christopher Columbus used to find the Americas. This is his actual Portland chart. Some think that Columbus found North America. In fact, he never stepped foot in North America. He arrived first at the Bahamas, at an island that he called Guanahani. Most today believe that to be San Salvador Island. There's different theories on that. The first mainland that he landed on in the West was in Venezuela. Another thing many people don't know about him was that he was a Jew himself. And he was in close connection with the Jewish community in Spain and Majorca. We'll talk more about Columbus and Jamaica in the next teaching. This will be a two-part teaching. This is amazing stuff. I learned more on this teaching than I've ever learned on any teaching I've ever done. I knew none of this. There's some books out now. We'll talk about some of that in a little bit. But for now, I want to point out that as these Jews were fleeing to South America and the Bahamas, they needed protection. We weren't going to let our brothers and our sisters perish. Many Jewish sailors, pirates, came to their aid. I'll introduce you to one of them now. Yaakov Curiel. One of the most feared pirates on the open sea. As Spanish ships came to the New World, Yaakov and three ships that he used, he used three of his ships to intercept them. Using the advanced maps and charts, from his Jewish brethren from Majorca, he was able to come upon the enemy ships, <clears throat> ships with preciseness. Those Spanish ships didn't stand a chance. The Spaniards believed that these pirate ships were supernatural. How, how else could they be so precise in locating them and so uh, precise in their attacks. Surely they must have been ghosts from the dark side. No, they were Jews from God's side. You must be thinking I'm the only one who would think something so bizarre. Jewish pirates, come on! No, this is a new frontier booming in the last couple, two, three years that is just starting to take off in the Jewish community. And we now even have our first Jewish pirate movie. It's a short film, only 10 minutes long. Would you like to see it? Let's watch it. Give me just a minute. Okay. Oh, I should have said Jewish pirate, sorry. Here 
There we go. Make sure my sound is still on. Uh, online, you may not see this, but you can go, if you have Amazon Prime, go to, you can watch this free on there, and it's called The Pirate Captain Toldano. T-O-L-E-D-A-N-O. The Pirate Captain Toldano. And you can watch it for free. It's the only place I've been able to find it. Okay. It's a very, very powerful movie. I was hooping and a hollering through the whole thing. I'll try not to do that now. How do I click on it? Where'd it go? I should be able to click on it. How come I can't click on it? I got my play button. I'll just kick play. It may have a little advertisement in the beginning. We'll just have to suffer through that. I got to turn it up, I think. Where do you come from, Stowaway? When the captain asks a question, the boy will answer or die. Where did you sneak aboard my ship? San Pedro. That was two weeks ago. What do you want? I want to become a pirate. <laughs> Don't laugh. He eluded all of you for two weeks. Survived below eating rats and drinking his own piss. One of them. You impressed me so. But you waited too long to come out of hiding. At dawn, we will intercept the Spanish gold fleet. They won't be expecting us. <laughs> I can fight with you. The last thing I need is you on the foot. I can swing a sword. You can swing a sword. You'll be swinging from the yard arm, stowaway. Drop it. Get rid of him. It's a Kadush cup for Kadush. Wait a moment. 
That's mine. Who did you steal this from? I didn't steal it. It's mine. Use your next breath with great care. What I have left. It, it, it was my father's. Throw him in the brig. I'll deal with him later. But I want a brig. Let's go. No! No, please! No, it was my father! Can help. I want to fight the Spanish too. It is not about the Spanish boy. It is about the gold. Hey you. Come up you. I can be done. Perfect. Pronunciate. This actor's a Jew. Perfect. Uh, Ashkenazic. Oh, man. Who? <laughs> That's your father's cup. I was expelled from Toledo. My parents from Faro. Torquemada. He burned my father at the stake. <laughs> you are my prisoner, prisoner. You are a stowaway. Stowaways must be punished, you understand? When the sun rises tomorrow, you will fight by my side as my brother. Wow. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, that saved him, didn't he? <laughs> Therefore, we order the Jews and Jewesses of our kingdoms to depart and never to return. Edict of the Expulsion of the Jews, March 21st, 1492. I walked among high towers. I sailed through storms. I don't know if I can re go back. Where no man knew me. Ladino folk song of the Jews of Spain. Our first Jewish pirate movie. Isn't that great? I love that. I love that. 
Oh, I was. I was Hooper in the hall. Teresa thought something was wrong. <laughs> it doesn't work, and I tried. Okay. I'll put all the links uh, on when uh, after the service for online. Okay. Also, there's a book out, The Jewish Pirates of the Caribbean. A lot of the material, not all of it, but a lot of the material that I have today comes from that book. I studied a lot of different things, but this book was very good at guiding me down where to do the research. Uh, so it's very, very great book, great writer. So the Toldanos, that's who that captain was. Now, that's not a, wasn't a real... This is kind of a this movie is kind of a conglomeration of things that happened. There wasn't a specific story about this. They just kind of said this is what it was like. Okay? But there was a Toldanos family. And they were expelled from Spain in 1492. After the expulsion from Spain, the Toldanos went to Safad, Salonica, and Morocco. They arrived in Fez, Morocco during the 16th century from Salonica. And from there they went to a place called Meknes in Morocco. That's where that red dot is at. And there they became leaders of the community from the 16th century, even some down to today. This is their synagogue. Let's talk about one more famous pirate, Jean Lafitte. Anybody heard of him? He's very famous. He was not only a pirate, but also a privateer. Well, what's a privateer? To know that, we have to understand a few different words, like pirate, privateer, buccaneer, and corsair. Pirate is the most general of the four terms, originating with the Greek pirates, meaning brigand. It's usually applied to nautical misbehavior, including coastal raiding and intercepting ships on high seas. They'll say that it involves robbery, kidnapping, and murder. They would say these all qualify as piratical activities. But depending on which side you're on, that can rather include freedom fighting, retrieving your property, and justice, as we've seen today. But the words privateer, corsair, and buccaneer are generally under the umbrella term pirate. But do they mean different things? Yes, they do. A privateer was a, basically a pirate with papers. As the name suggests, privateers were private individuals commissioned by governments to carry out quasi-military activities. They would sail in privately owned armed ships, attacking merchant vessels and settlements belonging to a rival country. Corsairs were essentially privateers. Although the term cor corsair carried an added religious connotation because the conflict was between Muslim and Christian powers. The term Corsair is specifically tied, they don't always use it right, but the term Corsair is tied to the Mediterranean Sea. A buccaneer is also a privateer, but connected with the Caribbean. The buccaneers were very much against Spain, they obviously had a higher concentration of Jews. Pirates strictly uh, simply don't have any, they don't have any country behind them supporting them, even though they may have been targeting a specific country like Spain. No one hated the Spaniards more than the Jews. The Inquisition was one of the worst times of persecution for our people. In many ways, <coughs> worse than Hitler's persecution because there was more torture involved. And it went on not just for a few years like World War II, it went on for 700 years. 
tens of thousands of Jews died. There's a big push by historians now trying to say that new evidence has come out, and I've seen this evidence, where they say it shows less than 3,000 Jews died in the Inquisition. This is from the same spirit that denies the Holocaust. The adversary would rather no one knew about any Jews dying in history. That way, he can repeat it. Back to Jean Lafitte. He had been both a pirate at one time and also a privateer. If you're not familiar with him, he's famous in America for interrupting his pirate adventures to fight heroically for the United States in defense of New Orleans in the War of 1812. What he did was he alerted the U.S. government to a British plot to invade New Orleans. With the help of Lafitte and his pirates and a fleet of, of his ships, then Gen General Andrew Jackson was able to beat back the British. Most say that if he hadn't intervened, America would have lost the war. According to Lafitte, he was born in 1780 from Sephardic Jewish parents, whose grandmother and mother fled Spain for France in 1765. After his maternal grandfather was put to death by the Inquisition for Judaizing. It's another reason why I don't like that word. Lafitte was one of ours. He was a Jewish pirate. So the next time you see something with a pirate on it, or a product connected to the pirates, like say glass eye drops, <laughs> or, or peg leg oil, it may not be all that bad. In fact, there's even a brand of snacks called Pirate's Booty. We had one on your chair when you came in. Pirate's Booty is a kosher company founded by a Jewish man named Robert Ehrlich. It's a $70 million company. He's done very well. The same company offers Smart Puffs with another famous Jew as its mascot. So I hope I've done something to change your view of our once great men of the sea and gave them back their good names. There will be a part two. I have much more to share about our pirate brethren. Before we start the review, we've also added something else. Uh, I thought it would be a good idea, and I'm not sure if we want to do this date today, uh, because we're so close to Halloween. So I don't like, I don't want people to think this is our version, because this has nothing to do with that. What I want to do is every year after we pick this date, and if you want to go with this one, we can go with this one. Every year we do a thing on pirates, and we make this a, uh, uh, a Yeats core. There's already a Holocaust Remembrance Day. Why don't we have the same kind of thing for the people of the Inquisition and our pirates? So every year we will do this uh, in remembrance of them. Teresa has even made some lentils. You know, that's what we do for Yeats core. We have some lentils. Uh, for this occasion. Let's review. One, many of the pirates in history were Jews. Two, some of those Jewish pirates were even ordained rabbis. Three, many of the pirate ships had kosher kitchens and even synagogues aboard ship. Four, at one point the Hasmoneans, the, that's the Maccabees by the way, they controlled the Mediterranean. Five, the Majorcan school was made up of mostly Jews who produced maps and charts that later helped Jewish pirates and even uh, Columbus. Six, the Jewish pirates were so well trained that our enemies began to make up supernatural myths about them. Seven, because we celebrate Yitzchor, 
Our enemies thought we were talking to ghosts, and this produced more fables. 8. The skull and crossbones was a symbol that we created. 9. Columbus was a Jew who discovered some of the Americas, but not North America. And by, dis by dis the word discovered, we mean he was one of the first Europeans to find, some, to find these countries. There were already people there. Kind of, I don't understand this whole discovery. They were discovered by, it was new to Europeans, but there were already people here. And 10, Jean Lafitte was a famous pirate and quite possibly saved America. If, he had, if they had lost that war, some people think that would have been the end. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the teaching. Okay, we'll say goodbye to our people online. Okay, God bless you. that palm tree that's on the island back there. I made that and uh, I got some help from uh, Teresa and from Nancy and from Peggy. We all kind of worked on this together. But I made that and I made some uh, yeah, some, uh, some of the other little things back there. Uh, we got some coconuts with kippas. Um, <laughs> some tangerines that have kippas drawn on them. So yeah, it was fun. We had a good week. Yeah, we'll say the, the most. But we got still got to do a couple things. We got to.